Welcome to the Louvre. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode in our Paris series. Today we're going to explore the famous Louvre Museum. This is the largest and most iconic art museum in the world and they say if you've been to Paris and you haven't visited the Louvre, well then you actually haven't been to Paris. So we're going to spend most of the day here and tell you all about this iconic landmark and world-renowned museum. Okay, hold on. Before we get started, Brooke has some important travel advice when walking the streets of Paris. Let's get some travel advice from Brooke. So when you wear a dress, it does get a little windy here, but don't wear them over the grates in the ground because I just walked over one and what happened? Two behind her. everyone saw my backside and then it, I went like this and my front side came up. After I went like this to put my backside. So you totally had a Marilyn Monroe moment. Yeah, but I actually showed something. <laughs> All right, don't walk on the grates. All right, thanks, Brooke. Now let's get back to our day at the Louvre. Right now, we are headed to one of my favorite places, the Louvre Museum in Paris. It is so cool. It's the biggest museum I have ever been into in my entire life. So I'm excited to go. It is day three in Paris. We're headed to the Louvre Museum. So we're on our way to catch the metro. Right now we're walking down the famous Shans Alize. You guys excited? Yeah, I am. All right, check this out. After a quick metro ride and only a few stops later, we were at our stop, the Mise de Louvre. All the stops were labeled clearly, and once we climbed the steps out of the metro, we found ourselves on the back side of the Louvre Palace and the museum. Now we just had to find the Crystal Pyramid, which was right across the crosswalk through the opening on the other side of the street. Okay, let's cover some details. Here we are at the entrance to the Louvre and the famous glass pyramid. As you can see, there is a line. There are actually four lines, so make sure you read the signs to get in the correct line. The line we are in on the left is the line for prepaid tickets. Tickets are 17 euros for adults and children under 18 are free. By the way, this is summertime at about 10 a.m. You can walk up without a ticket, but that line is crazy long. So one travel tip, we highly recommend you buy tickets online, pretty much for everything, if you can in Paris, especially the Louvre. So we bought our tickets online. We got here pretty easily, but we still have to wait in line, I think, to go through security. So you can see everybody here with prepaid tickets are in this line. And everybody without are in the opposite line. It wraps around the side. It, it wraps around the perimeter of the whole loop, which is so big. So you don't want that. <laughs> and in this line, it was a pretty big line, but we're getting through it in about 10 minutes. Right. So it's a little intimidating, but it's moving quickly. And we're almost here. The prepaid ticket. So there's the line with the folks without prepaid tickets. All right, we made it through security pretty quick. We are now in the loop. Glass pyramid. Yay, I'm excited. Let's get our lube on. All right, let's go. So I'm gonna show you a map of the lube, a paper one so you can just see how big it is. There's a map right there, this lady's looking at. There it is. So here we go. They have them in every, every language. Check this out. Okay. So you can get a map in every language at the information desk, but check this normal map, and then we have the loop map. Wait, wait, there's still more. Is there a backside? There is. So that is what we're supposed to look at today. Right, those in are all... In one hour. In one hour. Just kidding. Just, Just kidding. kidding. This is massive. And this is the center right here. So this is the whole perimeter. And it's more what than one... Where is the Mona Lisa on? I think it's on the back. Right here. The Mona Lisa, the Denon wing. 
And they say that's the one you got to get to as soon as possible, but I think there's going to be a big line. There will be. So the Mona Lisa, the deal with the Mona Lisa, is it the most overrated picture in history. But Some people think that, but, but I still like looking at it. But it's fun to look at because it's still, regardless it's of what it is, it's iconic, it's famous. And, you and one thing that Brooke always likes to get when we're in museums is an audio tour guide. So we're going to try and get one right now. Yes, sorry, they already have to buy it downstairs, but ticket office, yes, it's not here. But right now it's sold out. We don't have any other guys for the moment, yes? Okay. Okay. Let's wait for them. All right, looks like we struck out on that one. It's just so busy here that I guess you had to reserve those ahead of time. After scanning the tickets on our phone, we we're finally in the Louvre. Now it's time to come up with a game plan on how we're going to tackle this beast of a museum. So we found a very rare to find bench uh -huh. and we're now coming up with our game plan for the rest of the day at the Louvre. So travel tip, if you don't have a lot of time, when you get to the Louvre, go to the Mona Lisa, see it, and then try and stop and figure out your game plan on what you want to see next. Kind of prioritize everything and start going to the different rooms and galleries um, at the top and work your way down and see how much you can get through. All right, so our game plan was to obviously get to the most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa. And the way the museum is set up, there are signs all throughout with arrows that point you in the right direction. And if you just follow the signs for the Mona Lisa, you're going to get a great tour of most of the galleries that you're going to want to see while you're at the Louvre. The last time we were here, it wasn't this crazy, but at the top of this stairwell is a very famous sculpture. Very. Brooke, since you're the expert at the Louvre, what are we looking at here behind Winged us? Winged Victory behind us. Winged Victory. Uh-huh. How come it's broken? The head's chopped up. A lot of times when they found them, they were already in that condition. I'm not sure about Wing Victory, though. That's a jit. Can I get one that's not broken, please? Uh, we'll see about that. Mona Lisa is actually like a scavenger hunt. You got to be sure to keep looking for the signs and arrows. Um, excuse me, sir. Do you know how to get to the Mona Lisa? I think it's a woman. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Bon <laughs> Bonjour. Do you know how to get to the Mona Lisa? <laughs> Nay. <Maybe. laughs> All right, so pardon the dad jokes, but there's just so much to see around every corner that you've got to have some fun along the way. To go down, it's stepping on baby step. That looks painful little kid. <laughs> that looks like it hurts. Bro. Dad jokes on pause for a second. This is another one of our favorites. This is Cupid's Kiss. Truly amazing. Okay, back to more fun. Hey guys, uh, so I spilled Sprite on myself earlier, so I think I need to go take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> This room looks familiar. She's going to be in one of these rooms. Another. If you've been to the Louvre before, comment below and tell us what your favorite exhibit is. We want to know. I think everything in here is famous. If it's in the Louvre, it's got to be famous. So this room's really crowded, and there's now a line. Last time Brooke and I were here, we just got to walk right up to it. Now they have a big line. So if you want to wait in line, you can see the Mona Lisa directly from the front, which might be worth it if it's your first time. You can also get some pretty good views from either side. Mona Lisa, mission complete. 
Kenzie, what did you think of the Mona Lisa? I could barely see it. All right, that was the Mona Lisa, Fast and Furious. So many people in there, so but many. we saw her. And what did you think, Kenzie? It's so, so amazing. Hey, I think Leonardo da Vinci forgot to paint her eyebrows, though. What's up with that? I don't know. I think it's probably under the painting of years uh, and years of monk. <laughs> And cake throwing. And cake throwing. Yeah, I guess somebody threw a cake on the painting a few years then back. That's yeah. why they put the cover on. Yeah, so now there's a glass panel over the painting. Yeah. There's a big pew. Always got somebody's always got to ruin it for everybody else. But here's you know. a little travel tip. There was a huge line that serpentine to get right in front of the Mona Lisa. But if you go to the left or right, uh -huh. you can actually just walk through and still get pretty close without having to wait in the huge line. I would. And that's what we did. And that's quite what you're doing. Yeah, I would definitely suggest that because there's so many other pieces of art that are worthy of looking at besides that one. <laughs> and now we're on to the other 1 million exhibits and artifacts in the Louvre. Okay. So let's go. After all that, and before we get much farther, we were all in need of a little break, and we found the perfect spot for one. So FYI, there is a cafe. There's actually multiple cafes at the Louvre, and we're taking a pit stop right now. We'll check out this view. Thankfully, the line at the cafe was rather short. They had a great selection of baguettes, pastries, macaroons, coffees, and drinks, and we were actually quite impressed. Here's what we got at the Louvre Cafe. So we got three sodas, a baguette, and a bag of chips. Oh, awesome. and, and water. And, and a water. bottle. And it was 26, 30. 30. And we still have our macaroon. Yep, we, we still have our water rain, which we did not buy here, though. And the water rain macaroons. And of note, there's no ice in the drinks. Although it was a little spendy, it was a nice break to sit down and recharge before we headed on to more of the museum. The cool thing about uh, the Michelangelo's is when we were in Rome and Florence, we saw some of them at the museums there, and now look, they have them in Paris at the Louvre. <laughs> All right, onward. Of note, we didn't see many families with really young kids here, and even with teenagers, this place can be a little overwhelming and tiring. So I just had to keep the dad jokes flowing to try to keep it fun. Have you seen Mummy? I think I just found her actually. <laughs> there are a lot of interesting things in the Louvre. Look at this exhibit. Strange but intriguing. What floor is the Stranger Things exhibit on? It's on floor NO. Pretty nice margarita glasses. Besides the margarita glasses, this gallery holds some of the French crown jewels, which were actually really neat to see. Obviously, there's so much to see in the Louvre, and it might be hard to keep the kids engaged and entertained. Fortunately, Kenzie as a teenager is doing pretty well so far. Those are some really old carpets. I want to put my toes on them. You want to put your toes on them? <laughs> some old king probably had his stinky feet on them. <laughs> like we mentioned earlier, Brooke loves art and all sorts of art history. And the first time she and I were in Paris before kids, we actually spent two full days here. So you can see she is definitely on a mission to see as much as she can. And while Kenzie and I actually enjoy most of this stuff, we're just trying to keep ourselves entertained along the way. What's the N stand for? Napoleon. Duh. Next up, we are entering the exhibit of Napoleon III's apartments. This is one of the most interesting exhibits at the Louvre and definitely a must see. Napoleon III was the nephew of the more famous army general, Napoleon I. The Louvre was actually a palace before it became a museum. Kings, emperors, and ministers all wandered here. And these lavish apartments take you back to the mid-1800s when Napoleon III's Ministry of State resided here. The apartments are brilliantly decorated in gold, velvet, and burgundy, and they are almost untouched from the way it was back in the 1800s. 
After the 1800s, these apartments became home to the Ministry of France, where they lived until 1989, when the Louvre finally became a museum. We need a sofa like this at our house, Hawkins. Huh, right. We should just do this whole thing. I think it looks great. You should send this to the kitchen. Okay. Hey, Kenzie, you and Mom, just go ahead. I'm going to go grab a seat. <laughs> Guys, I know. there is no way you can rob his apartment. <laughs> yeah, Napoleon had some really loud floors. They creak yeah. a lot. <laughs> Napoleon's dining room table. Which one's your seat? Right there. Oh, awesome. You're kind of right in the middle so you can talk to everybody. Huh? Our time at the Louvre has been great, but now it's time to explore more of Paris. However, there's just one small challenge left. Here's the biggest question of the day. How do we get out of here? I don't know. I think we take a right, then we take I a right, then we take a left, then we take a right, then we take a left, then we take a left, then we take a right. Finding our way out was no easy feat, but just look for the signs that say Sauti. Just to let you know, the Louvre is massive, and it's going to take you a little bit of time before you can actually exit. On the way out, you might come across these two large atriums, which are also one of our favorite places to visit. Here you will find many grand statues which were originally built for outdoor areas such as the Gardens of Versailles and Tuileries. This is also another place to grab a seat and relax and take it all in if you need a break and enjoy the views and the natural light which comes in through the glass ceiling. That was, that was the loop. Fast and furious. Very fast and furious. And Kenzie got a little taste of it. Yay. We probably saw one tenth of the loot. Is that? <laughs> but that's okay. It was her first time. I wanted it to be fun. I'm you the gift stories. Here's an important note. When you finally exit the Louvre Museum itself, you end up in the Carousel du Louvre, which has dozens of boutiques, shops and restaurants, and gourmet food stands. So it's going to take you another 20 to 30 minutes before you actually exit the Louvre Palace if you don't stop at any of the shops and just continue walking. So just be prepared for this because I was in much more of a hurry to get out of there than the girls were. So basically we're trapped. I just want to leave. I want to get out of here. I want to get up top. Shopping, sorte, exit. This way. Eventually we made it back outside the palace. We had such a great time at the Louvre, and even if you're not a huge art history fan like Brooke is, the Louvre is definitely a spot you must visit while in Paris, and it's worth the ticket of admission. You can spend a few hours there or a few days there. The choice is up to you. Now, before we end this episode, we have to show you another attraction, which is right next to the Louvre. So just continue walking under the smaller version of the Arc de Triomphe, and you're going to find yourself in the center of the Tuileries Gardens. If you want to relate it to something, this is Paris's version of New York City's Central Park. The grounds are expansive and beautiful and have a ton of history surrounding them. In 1664, Louis XIV opened these beautiful grounds to everyone, and this became the first public gardens in Paris. Tuileries became, and still is, the center of social and political life in Paris, and is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And here's another reason to visit the Tuileries Gardens. If you've got little ones that spent all day at the Louvre with you, and they just weren't as excited about all that art, history, and old stuff as you were, well now you can use this as a little reward for their patience. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, well that was a pretty awesome afternoon at the Louvre, but if I was in the center of Paris and wanted to know where I could find a Ferris wheel, where do you think I could find one? I don't know, maybe right, right there. there. What? Kenzie, you get two choices. We can ride the Ferris wheel or you can take a dip. Uh, yeah, you I'm choose. Terrible. Which one? None. No, you gotta choose one. No. <laughs> and even better, here's what I'm talking about. 
Under the big Ferris wheel in the Tuileries Gardens, every June through August there is a huge carnival or fun fair. It is free to enter and there are paid rides and attractions. This is definitely a fun spot to spend an hour or so and reward those little ones for being so awesome while you are touring the Louvre Museum. And is a great and fun way to end the day for everyone. So look who we have back, it's Parker. So if you guys didn't see Parker today at the Louvre Museum, he was really, really tired. And him being the teenager that he is, we actually just let him sleep it off today. He's just yeah. a little worn out, but we got him back because the boy is hungry and we're gonna go find a cafe to eat at. So yeah. welcome back, Parker. Thank you. Kenzie, what'd you get? I got lasagna. Lasagna. Brooke, what did you get? Oh. I have a goat cheese salad, but what's unique, they put it on like a toast for the goat cheese awesome. and then the salad's underneath. Parker? I got some steak. Flank steak and fruits. And I got the rigatoni. That was a full day. We hope you enjoyed this episode and hopefully it gave you a little insight on a day at the Louvre with the family. Don't forget to look out for our other videos in our Paris series and stay tuned for more adventures on our summer in France. And that's a wrap on the Louvre. Now on to our next little adventure. All right, we're out of here. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more American Travel Family Adventures! Kenzie, what did they call French fries in France? Frites! <laughs>